All right, we got another edition of Truth Seekers with uh, Coach Nick Davies and myself being joined by Christine today. Uh, today's topic, we will be talking about setting standards. I love this topic because I think it applies to many different uh, aspects as you, as you grow, as you go through life, personally, professionally, uh, and your standards may change. So my first question for Christine is going to be, how you use standards in your life today? Uh, obviously, I think there's, there's some level of subconscious standards we have for ourselves, but what sort of intentional standards do you have in your life right now? Intentional standards. Well, um, I, you know, Nick might appreciate this. I, I'm, um, I'm very competitive, um, I guess from a, you know, work and, and also in, in life in general, I just, I, you know, I, I want to be the best, um, especially at, at work. So I tend to hold myself to very high standards, um, in terms of, you know, if I think about like my personal brand, that's definitely something that, you know, I want to make sure is projected that um, I'm going to deliver the best. Yeah. Okay. So what else develop that a little bit further, your, your brand, uh, does that mean like you have a company or just you as a person uh, to exude certain things that you'd like to be known for? Yeah. Well, um, so I work in financial services and um you know, one of the big parts of, you know, my development has been, um, you know, focusing on your personal brand. So what you're known for, what, you know, if somebody is talking about you and you're not in the room, you know, part of that is like your, is to your, your brand. Um, you know, and I think that that's a big thing to think about when you're, you know, depending on, you know, whatever career you're pursuing or thing in life, like what are people thinking about you when you're not there? And I attach that to my personal brand. So, you know, standards, you know, I want to make sure that what I deliver is going to be, you know, something that's going to, you know, change the organization that I want to be associated with, um, you know, doing something really, um, you know, incredible that's going to, you know, make everybody think, wow, she thinks outside of the box. She can deliver on time. She can do things that, you know, we didn't think were possible. Yeah, I like I like that idea. So you mentioned delivery a couple of times. I'm bringing Nick in on this because that's something that we work on at Pro Advisor Coach uh, is our own brand, and we can have certain intentions about it, but it's the actual execution on it and delivery of it that that earns us that brand. Would you say that's true, Nick? Yeah, absolutely. Because things are things are always born twice what they're born once in your mind and what you decide that they're going to be. And they're, they're born again when, when they're actually created in reality. Mm. So we can expect from ourselves like, Oh, I can do something. I can do that. Like I could, I could run a marathon. I know I could, like you could, could be completely convinced. If someone asks you if that person could run a marathon, you're like, well, I've never seen it. So you've, you've actually got to do it in order for it to be real for everyone else. So let me ask you, is it always um, perfectly reflective? So it happens in your mind and you think of it one way. How, how often does that exactly reflect on the actual delivery portion? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think you've got, you've got, to, you've got to decide that you believe it before you can actually do it. You know, the, think about the old um, Roger Bannister story, about the, the four minute mile back in 1954. Roger, Roger Bannister was the first man ever to run a mile under four minutes. For thousands of years before, no one had ever run a mile under four minutes. And think about it, like there, there, there was, there was, it was not like no one was trying to do it. Everyone was trying to do it and they can never do it. And the, the, the societal mindset was humans can't run a mile under four minutes. And you know, Roger decided that like, he could. <laughs> and he'd seen it so many times over and over and over in his mind that he'd done it already. Like he, he already had the belief and then he went out there and actually physically did it. And so those things had to line up. It's like he had to believe it first, then he did it. Yeah. And so, but, why, why, why I like that is because if you were to ask anybody else, like after he had the thought, but before he delivered on it, if he was crazy that he could run a four minute mile, everybody would say he's crazy. 
but it was the creation of it in his mind that that made it real and then that's all he saw that's all he directed so i mean mm -hmm. that's a good way christine so for you like with your brand and your image um professionally like um how do you like you the brand that you want to create is not necessarily known by others at that point in time so from the point of creation of, of your intention of what you want to set mm. how do you go about making sure that you're executing on the things that will deliver um that result for how they think of, of you and your brand right I, I, maybe it goes back to what nick was saying like i actually did an exercise where i wrote down what i wanted my personal brand to look mm -hmm. like i you know, thought about it, said, you know, what do I want to be known for? You know, what do I want to be associated with? What sort of behaviors, you know, I just went through it and I, and I literally typed it up and had it sitting on my desk. Um, you know, that was a couple years ago that I did that, but, you know, I don't have it here now, but I did go through that exercise and, you know, that was really beneficial because you know when you put it out there into the universe like you've set intention and you've you've said this is what i'm going to do and then you can reference that and you know the more you go back to it and then you then it just becomes part of you but you really like you said it's like a goal like i'm going to become this brand this is going to be me and when i'm not in the room this is how people are going to associate me so then when you are asked to do things or when you're you know when you um, you know, whatever it is that you, you do, um, you can come back to that and say, okay, if I'm going to deliver this, or if I'm going to, you know, write up this paper, if I'm going to present this, you know, document, or if I'm going to, you know, present this idea, I, how do I make it like that? And, you know, and then that just, you do it so many times, it just kind of becomes you. And then, yeah, that's how, um, you know, I think it just becomes innate. Yeah, I like what you said there, uh, especially the last part about it, it becomes you. So do you, did you notice yourself? Like, did you catch yourself um, maybe practicing old habits or doing other things that weren't aligned with that? And, and what did that look like? Oh, yeah. It, you know, it's easy to come go back to old habits. But, um, you know, I think then you get bogged down and then you, you realize, you know, this isn't, this isn't what I want to do. And then right there, you know, if you're sitting at your desk, you write, you look over and you say, yeah, that that's not, that's not who I want to be. And that's not who I am. And you start to use those positive messages to yourself and you can turn yourself around. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, if I, I would get bogged down in the politics or, you know, something, you know, silly would come up that somebody's, you know, and, and you don't want to, you know, get involved in that. It just, brings you down. And so right. if you can just, you know, come back to a place where you reference, you know, who you want to be and where you're going as part of your brand building, then you can move it forward. And it's almost, it's almost like a compass. Like you, you just continually go back that if you're traveling or, you know, uh, out in the wilderness, you, you need to know where your North is. So your North is your, you're writing it down, making, making, uh, you know, your brand intentional. I, I just love that idea about like, it, there, there's a, for the beginning part of our life, I don't think we're, we're aware of that. We're not intentional about setting that. And then there, there gets to be a point in time where, you know, you, you figure like, oh, I can kind of control this. This is, you know, I have some say in my destiny here. And I think that's, that's such an important thing to realize. And then to, to grow from that, you can constantly tweak it and change it and adjust it as you go, because there's such a learning experience once you do that for the first time and then Mm -hmm. keep practicing it right Nick does that resonate yeah <clears throat> and and it's easy I guess for us to say there's a point where you you figure that out but for some people there isn't ever mm. uh, and it, so I think I've seen it happen different times there's people it's like you you, you see these people that are perhaps in the in the in the spotlight like they're very young and they've already figured it out and there's people that are into their 60s and 70s that haven't figured it out and I think like what a lot of what we do is just help people, direct people towards whatever that is for them, because mm -hmm. it's like, what can I get away with versus what can I contribute? And, and uh, to know that you, you get to choose like what, what standards you set and to back to that standards, because when, when you do that, you can't help but produce it. So like it's once you've defined what that identity is, that person you want to be, mm -hmm. it's much easier to be consistent with that. 
Whereas if it's each individual circumstance and you can say, okay, who do I want to be to deliver this right now? Every single time you've got to then figure it out. Whereas if you just set the standard for yourself, you can't help but perform at that level. Yeah. Like the, it's the most important, it's most, the most powerful thing in the human personality is to be consistent with who we think we are. So if we, th- we think we're someone we hold a, a standard that's up here, then you can't help but deliver a standard up there because that's just who you are. Because and, and you can pull that towards everyone else as well. That's why it's so powerful. Because the second part of that Roger Bannister story is not the fact that he did it. He managed to do that. And then no one else had done it in history before. But it's the fact within two years of him doing it, 37 other people had did it. Mm. Yeah, so he, he held the standard based on him deciding who he wanted to be and was more convicted, more certain about what he saw in his mind than what everyone else was telling him that he held a higher standard, create, created a higher standard and just pulled people along with him because he held it there. I think that's cool. Yeah. Because you can yeah. do that everywhere. That kind of relates into the next question I wanted to ask. I was going to ask, you know, what happens when we don't have standards at all? Um, like would anybody have ever run a, a four minute mile? It takes it, it takes the first conceptual image in your mind to move in that direction. So maybe Christine, if you can, was there a moment? Do you remember professionally when when that moment clicked for you that it was you know good for you to be intentional about your standards? Well, I, yeah, um, I decided to get a mentor um, is when it really when that really kind of clicked. Um, and one of the challenge, one of the actions I had from a mentor meeting was you need to, you know, you need to decide what your personal brand is. And I was like, well, what's, what's personal brand this, you know, I'm not a company or, you know, but you know, she, she was like, you, you know, you are, you are your own, you know, mechanism in this industry and in your life, you need to decide what you're putting out there to the universe and what you want people to associate with you. Like what would, you know, what would you look like if you were Coca-Cola or, you know, like how would you, how, what do you want to do? And she, she said, you know, write it down, you know, and that's, that, that was a big changing point. Cause that's when it was like, whoa, okay, this is powerful. I'm putting it out there. What I'm, you know, who I'm going to be, what my standards are and who, how I want people to associate, you know, Christine Davies. Um, so that, that was a big, that was a big moment. And so next question is like, why, why is that important? Why does it matter? Does it do better for your sales, your, you know, whatever you're trying to accomplish? Why, how is that applicable to what, what your goals were professionally? Well, my, my goals, like going back to my competitiveness, I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to get promoted. I wanted to get, you know, a bigger, a bigger role. I wanted to start, you know, supervising people. I wanted to really, you know, build my career. And that was really the, you know, the first, you know, exercise that kind of went along with that. It's like, well, okay, you want, you want more, you want to do this? Like, what does it take? What do, what do people need to know about you? And then it just, you know, kind of, snowball from there yeah I, I like that because you just it's it's a you're looking for achievement of certain things certain things that you want to accomplish or mm-hmm. um gain out of it whether that's physical or emotional or psychological whatever but um i, th- I think it goes along with with goals a little bit um which as we but know I like, I like how it put it in my control you know i wanted all of these things but it was really coming back to well you know, you, you got to go out and get them and you got to, you know, build yourself up to, you know, to get those things, you know, it's, yeah. it comes back to how, you know, what you're associated with, what you want to do, you know, what people know about you. I love that because that applies to everybody because, you know, we deal with a lot of entrepreneurs or C-level people, but there's also a lot of people in the corporate world where, you know, they have to answer to the man or whatever, you know, they have a boss but you can control, you can control your own brand. Nick, you're smiling. <laughs> the man. <laughs> yeah. You're right, carry on. But I mean, that's, you, within, within whatever world that you participate in professionally, you can set goals for yourself and goals become the standard, I guess. So as, as you achieve them and as you achieve, uh, you know, everything that comes along with it, either materially or physically, psychologically, mentally, um 
it's important to adjust that as you go. So you might want to add things to your brand or tweak things or recognize that if and when you achieve a, a certain portion or part of your brand that you became something else that you don't like as much. Mm-hmm. And then that's, that's where the tweaking comes in. Yeah. Cause if you, if you think about it like in, um, in a monetary sense, so if your, if your goal is, I want, I want to be, I want to have, a, I want to earn a million dollars a year. So that's the goal. Like that's the thing that you know is the success, but in order to have a million dollars a year, you have to be the type of person that own that earns a million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. So if you, that's the same thing with brands. So if you, you're, what does my brand do? My brand, this, this is the type of brand that earns a million dollars a year. Okay. Well, what does that actual, what does a brand actually do? What does a person actually do that earns a million dollars a year? And you can re- reverse engineering this, which is really cool. You can model it. Mm-hmm. Right, so who, who does earn a million dollars a year? What do they do? Mm. And then in order to get to a million dollars a year, all you have to do is do the things that the person that earns a million dollars a year does. And you can't help but be aligned with having that million dollars. It's cool. You can reverse engineer that brand or that identity. Or yeah. That I, I think there's a delicate dance of that. So take, take the marathon story. There, there's nothing to model himself after, right? But also like in a professional world, if you want, if you want to earn that million dollars, we'll take that scenario. Um, you want to use it as a guide, but you also want to make it your own at the same time, right? So it's injecting your own personality and the things that you do best. Yeah. Right. You can't control your outcomes, right? It's a, right. It's a leg goal. It's a harvest. You, you can't control directly if you're going to harvest potatoes this year, but you can control how many times you water them, how many times you weed them, how many times you, you tend to them. Same thing, right? So Roger Bannister didn't know exactly that that's, he wasn't guaranteed that was the outcome, but he decided, look, I'm going to be this person does this. I'm going to do the things that needs to be done. What would put, what would someone train to run a, run a mile under four minutes do? And it's obviously more than the people that were doing it before. And so just doing those things. Okay. Here, I've got a model, but I need to extend it a little bit. Okay. So if you're, if I'm a person that earns 500,000 a year and um, I want to earn a million a year uh, right now, I am you know, delivering on 10 client meetings a week. Let's just say for example, uh, if I, if I do 50% more, is that going to give me 50% more pay? So is that going to get me to 750? If I, if I did twice as much would that mean I'm a million, we don't know, but it's a good place to start from. You doubled it. Let's see. And then you're going to, you're going to make, as you say, you're going to make tweaks. It is a balance, but you're going to get more information and see what that's like along the line. And so you can, that's why you can take those huge goals as much, as big as you want. And then you can just track them back to where you are and you say, what do I need to do based on what I know? Yeah. That's why it's really cool. I wonder, I wonder how much of that process is faith-based because like you said, you can't control the outcome. So you can control all the stuff that you can control to try to achieve that. And if Christina, I can relate to, to your um, scenario, the brand image of yourself almost implies like there's, there needs to be an agreement from somebody else that that's what your brand or image is. And you can't control that, right? So if this, talk to me, like if you're not achieving that, but you're doing the things that you thought you needed to do to, to do that, what, what would your reaction be? How would you adjust that? Oh yeah, you, I mean, feedback, you, you know, you've got to be open to feedback because, you know, you try something and it doesn't work. It's not achieving the, you know, what you said it set out to be. you got to adjust and, and, and try again. And, um, you know, I, and the, Nick might laugh at this. So I, one of, one of some feedback I got was that I didn't smile enough. Like I was like, remember like people thought I was unapproachable, but it, I can't even imagine it now, but it was just cause I was so serious and so focused all the time. And so I gave off this, you know, like people didn't want to come to my desk cause they were like, oh my gosh, maybe she's too busy or, you know, and, yeah. um, and you know, I got that feedback cause I didn't want to be that person. You know, I had set out to be this person that was really focused on delivering. And, you know, I knew my, you know, I knew my stuff. If anybody asked me what, you know, it, it was during when I was managing synthetics and, um, um, and you know, I had, I was really focused on building my brand. And when I got that feedback, I was like, Oh my gosh. And I realized it just w- didn't, come to me naturally, right? That, you know, and it seems like such a silly thing, right? You don't, you know, smile enough. Um, but it, it really resonated with me because I was, it's like, that's not who I want to be. And that's not how I felt I was, but it, it, you know, 
it was how I kind of projected myself to people. And, you know, I kind of, you know, I took that in and I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try harder because, you know, I don't want to be that, you know, perceived like that. That's, I want to be an approachable person that's open to sharing the information that I have in my head and, you know, ready to give that to the world. And so I tried really hard. I, you know, I was like, I'm going to smile even when I'm uncomfortable. (laughs) And then, you know, it just became part of me. And, you know, now I don't think that I would get that feedback. I, I feel like I'm, you know, I've, I've just made that into the person that I am. So I think it's just, you've got to recalibrate and be open to, you know, any kind of feedback because it's, you know, little things like that, that can make a difference in your career. Um, just, you know, your approachability, um, you know, if people think that they can't talk to you, then, you know, what, what benefit is to having all this information in my head that I can do a great job, but if people don't want to ask me about it or, um, you know, don't think that they can, then that's not, that's not what I, I want is associated with my brand. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I like that. This, uh, is an easy conversation to have. I love talking about this type of stuff. We're whizzing by already. Nick, help me. Uh, we're going to need to need to wrap this up a little bit and, um, let's get some takeaways. So obviously like readjusting or refocusing or like that's, that's one of the pillars so far. What's another one? Wait, start with the end in mind. Mm-hmm. Who do you want to be? What do you want to achieve? If you, if you haven't got you want people to say at your funeral. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a good, you know, that, that's a good exercise. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a bit morbid. So I prefer the exercise of like <laughs> when you're 95 years old and you're looking back and you're sitting in your rocking chair at your beach house or your mountain house, what do you want in your life? What do you want the big milestones to be? But you, and then there's a there's a micro and macro version of that. Like there's a there's a daily version of that. There's a month. There's a yearly version of that. There's a there's a decade version of that. This, there's this part of my career. Then there's a whole life. And then you break it down to categories of life as well. But it's the intentionality of where you want to go, mm-hmm. and more about it's really it's really about who you want to become. As corny as it sounds. Because when you when you are that person, you do those things. You, your life is those things, because it, it can't help not be. If you're a person that acts in a certain way, that's why you can see it. There's so many examples of this everywhere you go. I used to share this a lot in the corporate world, sitting down with people with my team. I'm like, who do you want to be? Like, out of all the people that are here, like, who do you respect? Who do you who who walks around where you go? That that person's cool. And just be, there's so many examples out there to to model. Just so the for me, it's the first thing. So is to start with the end in mind, because life life won't go to plan unless, if you haven't got one. Like, where do you want to go, and then and live those values? Like, what what does it actually look like? What do you actually have to do to hold that particular standard in that moment? Right, I like that. Um, Christine, any advice you would give to people either who haven't started this process or could benefit maybe from some some readjustment? Yeah, um, I think you know, it's important to, to look for other people who are demonstrating standards that you want to emulate. Like I, I got a lot out of that, like what Nick had just said about, you know, looking around if, who, who do you want to be like, or maybe there's just a piece of something like, you know, I, I think what made, has made a big difference in my career is a couple of my managers have just, you know, had really high standards, but that, you know, that, helped motivate me and creating some, um, you know, standards as well, you know, to, you know, to, to rise up and meet their standards, my standards grew and, you know, part of the expectations of myself then, you know, cause I had risen to their level and I just kind of perpetuated that. So I always look towards, you know, my leaders and, um, you know, even, you know, my peers of, you know, Ooh, I like how they do that. I'm going to bring that into my to, you know, to my little wheelhouse. Um, and then it just, you know, you just keep growing from there and then you can adopt it as your own with your own style and pizzazz, and then it becomes part of your brand. And, um, but I think, you know, setting down and, and writing those intentional pieces, like putting pen to paper, that really can be a powerful thing with goals, with building your brand, your standards, just what, you know, you want to be, um, I think that's really powerful exercise to do. Pen to paper, I, I like because um, because it makes it official, right? You, you can look at it after that. But also, when you're doing it, you have to you have to develop your thoughts. You have to think about 
what exactly you, you, you want to be or who you want to be or what, what, it, what it's going to look like. So I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. That's why journaling can be so powerful, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I, this is one of the things I share with all my clients when I first start working with them. If you don't write it down, it doesn't exist. You've got to have it written down. There's so many thoughts that come into our minds every day, what, 12 to 60,000. And the ones that are new aren't very frequent. So if you don't write it down, it's gone. So write down, if you don't write it down, it doesn't, doesn't exist. To, to use Christine's uh, terminology, it's putting it out in the universe in a more tangible way. Like our, our thoughts go out in the universe. You know, it's proven that we can measure frequencies and measure thought. That's how we know how many thoughts we have. But uh, to write it down makes it, makes it tangible. Makes it, you can see it, you can touch it, you can look at it and adjust it. I love yeah. that. And, and just a just final thing for me, just, just uh, uh, tying this all together, that's why it's so great us doing this is because think about the expectations or the standards. Here's a Tony Robbins quote from you, for you. Most people's lives are a direct reflection of the expectations of their peer group. And so that's why you are a reflection of the people that you're with the most. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if, if the expectations of your peer group are massively high standards, that's where you're going to be. You're either going to be cast out or you're going to be, you're going to be taken up to that standard. Mm -hmm. So why not be the, why not let's set the expectations. We, we included a quote in last week's content and said, sit with the winners, the conversation's different. So yeah. we're, we're going yeah. to, we're going to have to up that one this week here. So we'll see yeah. what we come up with. <laughs> well, thank you both for joining us on this edition of Truth Seekers. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks.